This shape generator can be used for whatever you want, but I personally like using it for inspiration. Similar to looking at clouds, you spot patterns and shapes just kind of pop out at you. So let's get started. So here we are in Blender, I'm using version 3.3 and you want to make sure that you're using 3.3 or later because there are some nodes that don't exist in previous versions. So to get started I'm just going to add in something like a plane, you can add in whatever mesh you want and we're going to go over to geometry nodes. So with the plane selected, we can add a new node tree right here, and I'm actually going to delete the group input because we're going to be generating geometry with a points node right here. And by the way, if you don't want to make this, you can download it from Patreon or you can get it on Gumroad. Uh, I'll put it up there too. But yeah, the points node is something that's new to 3.3 and it basically just lets you generate as many points as you want, but you can see they're all like right on top of each other. Um, and that's because we need to change the position of all of them right here. We're going to change the position with a noise texture. So bring in a noise texture right here and we can plug the color into the position. And to make all of the points move to different places, we can set this to 4D and we'll grab an index node right here and we'll plug the index into the W like that. Now you can see they're starting to spread apart. Something that's weird about the four dimensional noise texture is sometimes it will keep them all flat on one plane. I think that's tied to the scale right here, but you can see as you turn it down, um, they, will, they will start to spread apart like that. So I'm just gonna turn the detail all the way down and I wanna mess with the, the color output right here a little bit. So I'll bring in a vector math node right here and I wanna set this to subtract. We're gonna subtract it by 0.5 and this will keep everything in the center. And I want to duplicate this and we'll set it to scale like that. And this will let us push them apart. So let's add some more points now. I'll add something like 200. You can see they're all just kind of clustered together. And if we turn the scale down really low, you'll start to notice something interesting happen, but it's pretty hard to get it really low because you have to be pretty precise. So what I like to do is use a math node set to divide. You can just search for divide in here. And I'll make the second one 1000. So now this value at the top is going to be 1000 times smaller. So when you turn it up, it's essentially like you're turning it up a lot slower in smaller increments. But you can see it's kind of creating these like lines, these paths. And that's the effect that I'm looking for. I'm also going to turn the scale up to 10. This will let you decide like how scattered and random the shapes are going to be. So I think maybe around 15 is pretty good to start with. Now we're going to turn this into a mesh after the points node right here. We're going to bring in a points to volume node and we're also going to bring in a volume to mesh. And now we have a mesh that's been created. So I want to change some of these values. First off, I'm going to change this from amount to size and then we can set the voxel size right here. We can make this whatever we want, but the smaller this is, the higher resolution it will appear. This is how you know small the voxels are. So I'll set that to like 0.1 for now. And then the radius is going to be basically how thick it is. So we wanna make sure that our radius is at least 0.1 because if you make it go smaller than that, it'll start to kind of disconnect like this. So I'll set this to something like 0.2 for now. And I also wanna smooth this out because you can see it's pretty bumpy. So um, I'm going to use a node group that I made in a previous video um, and you can find that video in the description, but I have it marked as an asset. So I'll just drag that in. It's called smooth mesh right here and it works pretty much the same way that the smooth modifier does over here. So if you don't want to follow along the other video, you can just add a smooth modifier and just turn that up. I'm not going to use the smooth modifier, just know that you can. So we have the smooth mesh. I'll turn it up to like 80, maybe something like that. And you can see it's quite a bit smoother now, which is nice for us. We can randomize the thickness if we want also by adding a random value right here. So we can just drag this out and search for random, random value right there. And we can choose the minimum and maximum. So I'll set this to like 0.1 and maybe like 0.5. And you can see it's a little lumpier now, a little more uh, random, but you can set these to whatever you want. I also like the idea of making this symmetrical uh, as an option. So let's drag some of these out. The way that I found to do that is basically by duplicating all of these points right here and then flipping them and joining them back together. So we can add a join geometry like this, and we can add a transform node right here. So let's connect the points to the transform node. And when we preview this with shift alt left click, we can see that when we change the scale right here to negative one, 
it will flip like that. So now we can just join this flipped version with the original one. And when we take a look at the join geometry, now it's symmetrical. When we look at the final result, you'll notice that it's not completely symmetrical because of the random thickness like that, but there is a workaround. Let's add a reroute node right here. So to make this random thickness symmetrical too, we can capture an attribute right here, capture attribute, and I want to capture the index. And we can set this to integer so that it matches the color of our index right here. In the attribute, we're gonna plug into the ID of our random value. And when we do that, it should be completely mirrored. If you want, you can also mirror this on multiple axes. So the way we can do that is pretty much the same exact way we did here. You would just take another join geometry and another transform node like this. We can just reset the scale to one for everything over there. And say we want to mirror it on the Y, we can change this to negative one. And now you can see it's mirrored in two different directions like that. I don't really want to for this example, so I'm just going to select these and hit M to mute them like that. So this is pretty much how the random shape generator works. Now let's look at some of the options we have when playing around with it. One thing you can do to randomize the shapes is just add to the index right here. So I'll bring in another math node and we can change this to add. And you can see as we turn this up, the shapes will morph around like this. A way that I really like to control this is with a scene time node. And we can use the frame value to give us like a different seed for every single frame. Um, but if we plug it in here, you can see it moves up very slowly. Right now I'm just using the arrows and you can see that it's playing like that. Or you can just press the space bar and it will move around like so. I want it to move faster so that it's completely random. All we have to do is just multiply a big number right here. So we can just grab this divide node. It already is set to a thousand and we'll just change this to multiply and drop it in right there. And now it should give us pretty random shapes every time like this. Now the scale, the further you push it out like this, the more stringy it will get. You can see it's all kind of disconnected, but if you make this something smaller, it will be a little more solid looking like this. There won't be as many holes and as many long stringy pieces. The same goes for this divide node right here. If you turn this up quite a bit higher, it will just have a lot more detail going on. And you can kind of see that if you just look at the points right here, the higher you turn this up, the more random it's gonna look. It's just kind of a jumble at this point. So I personally like to leave this pretty low so that there's some sort of like specific shape, but you can set these to whatever you want. Let's take a look at some of these, see if we find any interesting ones. A lot of the time when I'm looking at random shapes through here, I see them as faces or heads and things like that but it could also be a good base for something like a sci-fi spaceship or you know just whatever you want and if you see a cool shape that you like and you want to save it what you can do is just shift d to duplicate like this we have a duplicate right here and you can right click and convert to mesh like this now you can actually go into edit mode if you wanted to like sculpt on top of this or you know use it for whatever you want you can get this shape generator on Gumroad, or you can get the project file from this video on Patreon, along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.